And what's so incredible about the human nervous system in particular is that we can direct our own neural changes. We can decide that we want to change our brain. In other words, our brain can change itself. Whatever thing we're sensing or perceiving or thinking or whatever emotions we feel can literally be mapped in the brain such that later it will become much easier for us to experience and feel that thing. Attention is something that is absolutely under your control. The nervous system basically wired up to be able to do most things easily without much metabolic demand, without consuming much energy. But the moment you try and do something very specific, it's going to, you're going to feel a sort of mental friction. It's going to be challenging. The thing about attention is it's like a spotlight, except it's not one spotlight. You actually have two attentional spotlights. Anyone that tells you you can't multitask, tell them they're wrong. And if they disagree with you, tell them to contact me. Because in old world primates, of which humans are, we are able to do what's called covert attention. We can place a spotlight of attention on something, for instance, something we're reading or looking at, or someone that we're listening to. And we can place a second spotlight of attention on something we're eating and how it tastes, or our child running around in the room, or my dog. You can split your attention into two locations, but of course you can also bring your attention, that is your perception, to one particular location. You can dilate your attention, kind of like making a spotlight more diffuse, or you can make it more concentrated. This is very important to understand. Neuroplasticity is the ability for these connections in the brain and body to change in response to experience. And what's so incredible about the human nervous system in particular is that we can direct our own neural changes. We can decide that we want to change our brain. In other words, our brain can change itself. And our, whatever thing we're sensing or perceiving or thinking or whatever emotions we feel can literally be mapped in the brain such that later it will become much easier for us to experience and feel that thing. Now, this has a dark side and a positive side. The dark side is it's actually very easy to get neuroplasticity as an adult through traumatic or terrible or challenging experiences. The dirty secret of neuroplasticity is that no neuroplasticity occurs during the thing you're trying to learn, during the terrible event, during the great event, during the thing that you're really trying to shape and learn. Nothing is actually changing between the neurons that is going to last. All the neuroplasticity, the strengthening of the synapses, the addition in some cases of new nerve cells, or at least connections between nerve cells. All of that occurs at a very different phase of life, which is when we are in sleep and non-sleep deep rest. And so neuroplasticity, which is the kind of holy grail of human experience of, you know, this is the new year and everyone's thinking new year's resolutions. And right now, perhaps everything's organized and people are highly motivated, but what happens in March or April or May? Well, that all depends on how much attention and focus one can continually bring to whatever it is they're trying to learn. So much so that agitation and a feeling of strain are actually required for this process of neuroplasticity to get triggered. But the actual rewiring occurs during periods of sleep and non-sleep deep rest. There's a study published last year that's particularly relevant here that I wanna share that showed that 20 minutes of deep rest this is not deep sleep, but essentially doing something very hard and very intense and then taking 20 minutes afterward, immediately afterwards, to deliberately turn off the deliberate focused thinking and engagement actually accelerated neuroplasticity.